time the victim was found. 8.05 a.m. on the 9th. Location. The parking lot near the back entrance of Hoolington College, a suburb of Liberty. Victim. Bill Robbins. 34. President of Robbins Trading Company Limited. Cause of death. Massive blood loss caused by multiple stab wounds to the back. Weapon. Sharp object. Approximate time of death. 1 a.m. on the 8th. Thorough investigation is being conducted. Many problems are anticipated. no one but yourself. Anyway, be thorough. Make as many contacts as possible. Hey, Harold. Do you intend to spend the rest of your life working on this case? Hurry up, will you? We're busy here. We got a lot of things to do in case you haven't noticed. The rape at the Downs Hill Cemetery. On April 23, 1983, at approximately 2.30 in the morning, a Ms. Sarah Shields, age 21, was beaten and raped by an unknown assailant near the Downs Hill Cemetery. The aggressor fled when a security guard making his rounds came by. Ms. Shields was found lying on the ground, unconscious, with severe wounds to her face and face. Ms. Shields could not give a description of her attacker, and he was never identified. Object stolen. Automobile. Ford. White Mountain. 1986. Reported stolen by Robbins Trading Company. Location of theft. Parking lot of the Robbins Trading Company. The lock must have been broken, and the car stolen from the parking lot. Object stolen. Wristwatch. Japanese name. Reported stolen by the Grand Hotel. Manager, Robert Hodgson. Location of theft. Unknown. The watch disappeared from the personal effects of a hotel guest. Stolen object. Butcher. Reported stolen by Vigorous Storm. Owner, Danny Vigorous. Location of theft inside the store. The owner claims that the knife was stolen from the display room. How's the investigation coming along? Well, hang in there. Good to see you, Inspector. It's good to see you, Officer. Morton Bradley. I'm 50 years old. I'm a security guard for Hoolington College. My blood type is B. I have a wife and two daughters. Fishing, working on my car. Can't think of any. I come from Bethesda, Maryland. I don't belong to any, sir. I had the night shift. I was finishing my rounds at about 2 in the morning when I noticed the car. Right about the time I found Mr. Robin, I heard a car screeching off. I couldn't get a good look at it, but I'd say it was blue. I had a weird gut feeling, so I went to take a look inside. When I opened the car door, the body fell on me. Jeez, was I surprised. It 
seems that Mr. Robbins was killed somewhere else and then dumped in that car. That's what the coroner was saying. The victim was a big man. I don't know if one person could handle that alone. That's the man whose corpse I discovered. I just opened the car door and he fell on me. I've never seen a dead man before. He gave me the shakes. The victim's father, big man around town. He came here to identify the body. Sorry, I don't know him. The victim's sister. She came here with her father after I discovered the body. I don't know her, sir. He's the medical examiner who performed the autopsy. We fish together sometime. I don't know her, sir. I don't know him, sir. Can I help you? Have you taken over the case, Mr. Harold? I'm Fred Robbins. After my brother died, his wife Janet went to stay with her parents. I'm house-sitting for her. I'm 30 years old. I work for the HH Company. My blood type is A. My father, Edward. My late brother, Billy. My sister, Kate. My brother-in-law, Michael Holding, and Pamela, our housekeeper, who is just like family to us. I like to play tennis. I'm an expert marksman. I was born here in this town. I belong to the Whitehawk Club. The night it happened, I went out to a movie. It ended about 11 and I went right home. What, theater? It was the Gaslight Theater. I have nothing to tell you. I hadn't talked to Bill in a while. It's a horse riding club. This is the first I've heard of it. Yes, I drive a red Ford. I don't know what you're talking about. I can't believe he's really dead. I guess it just hasn't sunk in yet. Why would anyone do this? My father is totally absorbed in his work. He cares more about the Robbins Trading Company than anything, including his family. She's great. I'm so glad that she and her husband Michael live right around the corner. Ever since the murder, she's been staying with her parents, the Carringtons. Her parents say she's in bad shape. Doesn't eat, doesn't sleep. They're really worried about him. He's an old friend of my father. He's known Bill and me since we were little. I don't know him. I don't know her. I don't know him. How can I help you? If it's about the deceased CEO, you should ask the president. He's in the back room. Please step this way. What is it? Edward Robbins. 60 years old. President of the Robbins Trading Company. Blood type? I don't remember. It rarely comes up in conversation. I have three children. My two sons, Bill and Fred, and my daughter, Kate. Work is my hobby. I have a private pilot's license with over 4,000 hours of flight time. 
I was born and raised here. I'm the managing director of the local branch of the Chamber of Commerce. That night, I went to my friend James McBain's place. I came home around 11 and went straight to bed. No, nothing. Please catch whoever did it. I don't want to talk about my son anymore. If it has to do with Bill's work, ask his secretary, Shelley McDonald. Now that Bill is gone, Fred is heir to the Robbins family business. He'd better shape up or we're in big trouble. Wonderful girl. She seemed to be on good terms with Bill. Janet is still young. She has to get over Bill's death and start a new life for herself. He's the family doctor and also an old friend. I don't know him. Who's that? McBain and I have been friends since we were boys. Just another lousy writer who can't sell any books. I think his work is a bad influence on the younger generation. Welcome to the Hotel Grand. What can we do for you? What is it? Robert Osborne. I'm 54 years old. I'm the manager of this hotel. My blood type is A. I have a wife and two children. I like to do a little bird watching now and then. I never forget a customer's name or face, even if I've only met him or her once. I was born in the California wine country, Kenwood, California to be exact. I sometimes meet with a group of hotel managers. The night of the murder, I was here working. Yes, all night. This is probably unrelated, but the night of the murder, one of our guests stayed out past two in the morning. A nervous man. His name is Manuel Barkley. 
fire shield stopped working here soon after it happened. Yes, one of our guests did report a missing watch. It was, thankfully, a false alarm. We were able to find it ourselves. Thank you for asking. Mr. Robbins came here on occasion. In fact, he had reservations for the night it happened. We had prepared a room with a king-sized bed for him. You can imagine his death was quite a shock. Edward Robbins is one of Liberty's most prominent and respected citizens. He stops in from time to time. I don't know him very well. I don't know her. I don't know Mrs. Robbins. I know of Dr. Randall. I remember her name. I think I've seen her with Bill Robbins a few times. She's got long blonde hair, doesn't she? I don't know him. She used to play the piano in the bar downstairs. Mr. McBain is one of our shareholders. About 20 years ago, his father died and left him the movie theater. I don't know him. I know him. He has been staying here for the past three weeks. Yes? What is it? Manuel Barkley. I'm 48 years old. I just travel wherever I feel like going. My blood type is AB. Back home, I have a wife and three kids. Just travel. I always make money when I go to the racetrack. I was born in Brazil. None. I was in my room. Okay, so I did leave the hotel the night of the murder. But I didn't have anything to do with the murder. I just took a walk. I'm telling the truth. Please believe me. I have nothing to tell the police. For the tenth time, I am just a tourist. I... I don't know. I read about it in the newspaper. A man got killed, right? There's no reason why I should know him. I don't know him. I don't know her. I don't know her. I don't see how that guy and I could possibly be connected. I don't know her at all. I don't know him. I don't know her. I don't know him. I've never even heard the name before. What do you want? Don't just stand there smoking that stinking cigarette. Go out and find the murderer. Pamela Smith. I'm 55 years old. I'm the housekeeper here. My blood type is old. The Robins are my family. I tell fortune. I can see you're skeptical. But just a month ago, the cards told me that something terrible would happen to Bill. What do you think of that? I'm a qualified newborn. I'm from Memphis. No, I don't belong to any. Mr. Robbins and Freddie were out, but I was home all night. When did they get in? I don't know. I must have been asleep. Well, there is something that's been bothering me. The night of the murder, I called Janet. She was sobbing, barely coherent, but she kept insisting everything was okay. The Robbins family had absolutely nothing to do with that incident. A terrible, dreadful thing. Can you imagine the pain his father must be going through? You don't see many men like Mr. Robbins. 
I always told the children they were lucky to have such a fine father. My little so bright and kind and good. The Robin's Trading Company is doing even better business once he takes over. You just watch. A stable, responsible young woman she is. A credit to the family. She can't dwell on it. She's just got to put the whole thing behind her. Dr. Randall is the Robbins family physician. His clinic is located near here. She's the saint to work for a difficult boss like Bill. You probably know whose fault it was that her little sister died. I don't know him. I don't know him. He's a friend of Mr. Robbins. You know, I believe that someone with that name came here to see Mr. Robbins. What can I do for you? I'm glad you're on the case. Kate Holden. I'm 24 years old. I'm a computer consultant. My blood type is A. I live with my husband, Michael, and his parents. I enjoy sewing. At the moment, I'm making a quilt. I am proficient at both basic and full track. I was born in Liberty. I'm a member of the Anonymous Club. I was at home the whole evening. Well, there is something. The night Bill was murdered, I heard someone leave the house. I think it was around 10.30. I couldn't help but notice. It's a local women's group that my mother-in-law organized. We raise money for charity. I still can't believe anyone would murder Bill. Although I knew there were some people who didn't like him. He can be stubborn at times, but he's a good man and a good father. Unfortunately, he and Bill didn't get along. They kept getting into arguments over business. He works for the H.H. Company. I think he's met someone that he really cares for. He's been hinting that he may get married soon. He has his weaknesses, but he's a good man, and I love him. He's at the office today. Poor thing. It's been terrible for her. I wish there was something I could do to make her feel better. Dr. Randall is the Robin family's doctor. Pamela's been with the family for as long as I can remember. She knows everything there is to know about the Robin's family. She used to work for my brother Bill. I've heard she lives by herself in an apartment near Hoolington College. I don't know him. I can't place the name. He and my dad have been friends since they were kids. He's one of the few people my father actually relaxes around. I don't know him. I don't know him. Oh, you want to talk to me? Tony Holding. I am 58 years old. I am president of the HH Company. My blood type is O. My wife, my son Michael, and my daughter-in-law Kate. Hobby? What sort of question is that? I like to listen to classical music and nurse a good brand. I've got a pilot's license. I was born in Ohio, lived here almost 15 years. I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce. I was home all that night. I didn't go anywhere. I hate to say this, but Bill really flaunted his extramarital affairs. I wonder whether it had something to do with his death. I drive a black BMW. I did go out that night. I, I guess I forgot. I had promised to meet someone. Who was I supposed to meet? 
Well, I... Uh, I... What a waste. He was brilliant. Quite a businessman. Edward Robbins is a remarkable man. He's contributed more to the business community than anyone in town. He works for me. He's nice, cheerful, hardworking, but he doesn't have his brother's business sense. She's very kind and considerate. She even manages to get along with that nagging wife of mine with no small feet. It may be because his mother spoiled him, but he has no motivation. It would make me happy if he just got his act together. I don't know Janet well. People say that he's a very good doctor. I have trouble dealing with her. I never know what to say. She used to be Bill's secretary. They were always together. I don't know him. I don't know her. He's the owner of the Gaslight Movie Theater. He's a very good businessman. I've never met him. I don't know him. What is it? Lucy Holmes. Imagine asking about my age. How rude. If you must know, I'm 52 years old. I'm the chairman of the board of the HH Company. My blood type is A. I live with my husband, Tony, my son, Michael, and my daughter-in-law, Kate. I enjoy dancing and singing. I'm quite an accomplished singer, if I do say so myself. I considered going on stage in my younger days. I was born here in Liberty. I belong to the Anemone Club. I was feeling under the weather. There was a party the night before. You know how that is. I spent the entire evening in bed. It's probably besides the point, but I wasn't feeling well the night of the murder, so I called Dr. Randall's office. But nobody answered. Nobody was at his house, either. It's a local women's charity organization. I'm the president. It was incredible, just awful. I still can't believe that someone so close to us could be dead to death. He has a reputation for business. More than one company doing business with him has been forced into bankruptcy. Well, he's not my Michael. He's a good, serious boy. On the surface, she's gentle and easygoing. But don't be fooled. She's one tough lady. He hasn't been feeling well since the murder took place. He doesn't seem to be getting much sleep at night either. I'm really worried about him. He's such a good boy. Always thinking about his mother. Take the night of the murder. I was sick in bed, and Michael never left my side. I can remember Bill and Janet's wedding as if it were yesterday. Such a beautiful ceremony. And to think that now that sweet young bride's a widow. That doctor, he's one of a kind, always ready to lend a helping hand. You know, he took in the daughter of a friend of his who died. Oh, the Robbins family maid. She's a difficult woman. I don't know her. I don't know I don't know her. He and Edward have been friends since they were children. I don't know him. I don't know him.
58 years old. I'm a physician. What is this a paternity suit? My wife died five years ago. I don't have any children, but my assistant, Susie McNally, lives with me. Like a daughter, I mean. I collect art. I'm a practicing doctor. That's certainly a skill. Boston. But I've been living here for some 30 years now. I don't belong here. I was here until late. I don't think I left the office until 1 o'clock in the morning. When I examined the body, I noticed that the wound was quite shallow. If I were to speculate, I'd say Bill was stabbed by a woman. Yes, I drive a blue Mercedes. I'd known him for years. He was like a son to me. Edward and I are old, old friends. He's a stubborn old Peter. If he gets an idea into his head to do something, he won't quit until he's done. He's a nice, serious young man. She seems very happy. I don't care much for his sort of flattery. She'll talk your ear off, but I like her anyway. She's got a good heart. There's not much I can tell you. I'm worried about her. She's in serious danger of suffering a nervous breakdown. She's gone home for a little while. My house is right around the corner from here. These questions are getting tedious. When she has something to say, she says it. That may put off some people, but I like her. That's Bill's secretary. She's an attractive young woman. I don't know her. I don't know her. That crazy old bachelor? He's one of my closest friends. You know, I examined him once a few years ago. I remember that I thought there was something strange about him, although I couldn't put my finger on it. I don't know him. any brothers or sisters either. I like postmodern music. I'm a qualified nurse. I was born in Pennsylvania. I've been living here a while. I don't belong to it. I was in my room. I didn't go anywhere that night. Nothing in particular. I don't have a car. When he came to the clinic to have his appendix removed, I wish I could be of more help. He stops by sometimes to see Simon. You know, I think he actually came by the night of the murder. He's a good person, but I... I don't know who he is. I don't know him. I've never talked to him. Sorry, I don't know him. Yet. I don't know him very well. My father and Simon are close. When my father died, Simon was good enough to help take care of him. He helped me get a nursing license. He's been just like a father to me. Mrs. Smith didn't seem to like Bill much. When he was in the clinic with appendectomy, she didn't visit him once. I don't even think she called. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. He's a friend of Simon's. Now that you mention it, I remember that the night of the murder, Simon said he was going to Mr. McVeigh's house. I don't know him. Sorry, I don't know him. What do you want? I 
I may be old-fashioned, but I can't say I approve of her more. It doesn't take her long to get to know a man. Please come in. She's the nurse over at Randall's clinic. She's really beautiful, isn't she? She's gorgeous. Oh, I guess I didn't go straight home. After the movie, I drove around for a little while. About an hour, I guess. I'm sorry, my son. You just missed the service. There's something troubling you, my son. Feel free to talk about it. Destiny Brown. I'm 58 years old. I'm the pastor of this church. My blood type is A. God is my life's companion. I give love to those who need it. As part of my work, I teach and give counsel. I was born in Kentucky. I help out with our church youth group. I was here, of course. Come to think of it, yes. The night of the murder, I heard the sound of a car coming from the graveyard. Very unusual at that late hour. I hope it's not related to Bill Robbins' murder. Mr. Robbins' funeral was held here. I pray for his soul daily. God bless him. He's made donations to this church and many worthwhile charities. He is a serious young man. I have great admiration for her. She's a strong woman with a heart of gold. He doesn't come to church very often, but... She's the president of the Anemone Club. I've worked with her at a number of functions. He and Kate were married here. Such fine young people. Only six months after saying her wedding vow to her, she was back in this church mourning her husband. It seems so unfair. Oh, well, the Lord works in mysterious ways. I've met him on occasion. Her father is buried in the cemetery behind the church. She goes there often to put flowers on his grave. Pamela, good soul, comes here quite often. She was here about a week ago praying for Mr. Robin's soul. Sorry, I don't know him. No, I don't know her. I met him. Who? I don't know him. Come in, Officer Harold. Thank you for your efforts. How can I be of help? Martha Carrington. I'm 45 years old. I'm a freelance interior designer. A. My husband, Joe, my son, Ralph, and my daughter, Janet. Gardening. I have a magnificent rose garden. I have some artistic ability. I was born in Boston. I've been living here for five years now. I don't belong to any club. I was home all evening.
My husband came in at about 11 o'clock. No, nothing at all. That's the charity organization that Mrs. Holding chairs. What can you say about a tragedy like that? He's a kind man, even though he's suffering through his own loss. He's shown such concern for Janet's welfare. Bill's brother? She's a thoughtful woman. She helps with so many of Janet's wedding arrangements. I don't know much about him. She asked me to get involved with the Anemone Club. It seems like a fine organization, but honestly, I'm uncomfortable in groups. I didn't join. I've never even talked to him. He's working today. My husband operates the home estate agency downtown. After Bill was killed, Janet came home. She needs the support of her family now. I just wish there were more we could do for her. It breaks my heart to see her suffering this way. I don't know him. I don't know her. She's been very kind and taken Janet under her wing. Apparently, Janet's learned a lot about the Robbins family from her. I've never met her. I don't know him. I don't know her. I don't know him. Sorry. Who? What? Janet Robbins. I'm 21. Before I got married, I worked for my father. A. I used to have a husband. Now I'm left with a father, mother, and brother. Things I like to do? At the moment, there aren't any. None. I was born in Boston. I belong to the Anemone Club. I was home all that night. I tried to wait up for Bill, but I must have dozed off. I was woken up by a phone call from the police telling me that my husband had been murdered. What do you mean? What sort of thing? I joined because Kate asked me to. A... Uh, a knife? I don't know anything about a knife. I don't want to talk about Bill right now. I just can't handle it. She's a wonderful mother. Even his own son's murder wasn't enough to make my father-in-law shed a tear. All he cares about is his stupid company. He's nice. I like him. I don't know. What are you trying to get from me? Kate is always looking after me. He makes my stomach turn. She's always saying bad things about Kate. I hate it. I don't know what to do about it. We never really got together much. Why? My father was terribly upset when Bill and I decided to get married. He opposed it all the way. I've met him. I don't know. I don't know her. Look, I'm tired. I can't think straight. Can we do this some other time? She only loves Fred. She only cares what happens to him. She hated Bill. She's probably glad he's dead. She used to be Bill's secretary. That's all I know. I don't know him. I don't know her. He's a friend of my father-in-law. I don't know him. I can't help you. I really want to lie down. I don't know him. I didn't go anywhere, and nobody came here. I was alone the whole time. Yeah? What's up? Ralph Carrington. I'm 21 years old. I go to Hoolington College. A.B. I live with my parents. I have a sister, Janet. I don't know. I like doing lots of things. I'm a great third baseman. I play for Hoolington College. I was born in Boston. 
I belong to the school psych club. We study criminal behavior. Why are you asking me this? I didn't do anything. I went out with my friends and I got home pretty late. No. I don't know anything about that. I don't have a car. I always ride a bike. To be honest, I hated his guts. The guy was a dirtbag. Still, I wouldn't wish death on anyone. My mom is really worried about Janet. She's afraid she'll never pull herself back together. I've barely talked to other guys. What are you asking me for? I've barely talked to him. I don't know her well. Never talked to him. He's an old gossip. I don't know him, but he looks like a real loser. He's kind of a recluse, not too good with most people, but he's been great to me and Janet. My sister is in lousy shape. She's cracking up, and I don't want to talk about it, okay? I don't know him. I've seen her with Bill at the Hungry Fisherman. She didn't like Bill at all. Not that I blame her. Fred has always been her little darling. I bet she's thrilled that he's going to be head of the company now. She used to be Bill's secretary. She's a very reliable, bright woman, and nice, too. And working for a jerk like that. He's the owner of the Hungry Fisherman. She plays the piano over at the Hungry Fisherman, right? Never met him. Don't know him. Don't know him. This is the second marriage for both of us. My first husband died when Janet and Ralph were about a year old. I married Joe ten years ago. Lately, I've been worried about him. He's been keeping to himself a lot, locking himself in his room. I have no idea what's going on inside his head. Yes? Yes, what is it? Shelly McDonald. I'm 28 years old. I work for the Robbins Trading Company. Oh. My parents died when I was young. I had a sister, but she died too. I write sometimes, just for my own enjoyment. I type and take shorthand. I also have good organizational skills. I was born in upstate New York and came here two years ago. I belong to the Amateur Writing Society. I took the day off work and went shopping. At about 6 o'clock, I stopped by Big Burger and then headed home. That was my evening. It's probably unrelated, but about a week before Bill was killed, a man I'd never seen before came by the office looking for him. After Bill talked to him, he seemed really distracted. I don't want to marry anybody. If you knew about my sister's marriage, you'd understand. My car is silver. It was a shock. One day he's here and the next he's gone. I don't know her very well. He's a tremendously demanding man. In fact, he expects work to get done at any cost. I don't think that he and Bill got along very well. I've run into her a few times. I don't really know her, but she seems nice. He's come by the office a few times to see Bill. No, I don't know why. Sorry, I've never spoken with her. He used to get together with Bill to plan White Hawk Club meetings. I've never met him. I wouldn't want to switch places with her. What a miserable thing to happen. It's not fair, is it? He and Janet are twins. He's the Robbins family physician and a friend of Edward Robbins. I don't know her very well. 
She works for the Robbins family. I don't know him. I don't know her. He's a friend of Edward Robbins. He owns the Gaslight Movie Theater. He has a bad reputation with the Amateur Writers Society. He's conceited, but it's not just that. Apparently, he was involved in some shady deals in New York. Oh, him. He's called the office to talk to Bill. Hi there. How about trying our amazing new triple cheeseburger? Or perhaps a tasty chocolate popper for dessert? Like, what do you want to talk to me for? Nick Goodman. Totally cool name, huh? I'm 20 years old. I'm like in college. I only work here part time. My blood type is A. I live with my parents and my older sister. I like to get together with the guys and jam. We play some pretty killer surf tunes. I'm an excellent bass player, dude. I was born in this lame town. I'm totally not into the group scene, you know? They were renovating this place the day that dude got killed, so I got off around three. I picked up Daisy and Ralph later on, and the three of us went for a cruise downtown. I got home before midnight. Yeah, wait a minute. I remember Ralph saying that he had something to do. We dropped him off around 10 near school. I never heard of it before. I drive an orange Fiesta. You mean the dead guy? Yeah, I knew Janet, his old lady. Like, you should call out the SWAT team to catch the lowlife who killed him, man. I met her once when I went to Ralph's house. She seemed pretty okay, for a mom. Uh, I don't know him. Never heard of the dude. I don't know her. Yeah, he's the president of the HH company. That company is really bogus. Like, this friend of mine worked there part-time, you know? And he was complaining that he totally had problems getting his dinero. I don't know her. I don't know him. That's my friend Ralph's old man. Yeah, I know her. She's my friend Ralph's sister. Yeah, we're pretty good friends. He's in Professor Ford's criminal psych class with me. Sometimes we go cruising together. As a matter of fact, we went out a couple of weeks ago. No, I don't know him. Who's that? I don't know her. Who? He owns this cafe that I go to, The Hungry Fisherman. She's a babe. She's way mysterious, and I totally like that. I bet a lot of the customers go there just to check her out. I think he owns the movie theater where my girlfriend Daisy works part-time. The old guy always has a cigar in his mouth. He acts like a jerk. I've seen him a couple of times over at The Hungry Fisherman. He's always bragging about something, always telling people that he's just got himself some fantastic contract. From what I've heard, he can barely sell any book. Sorry, dude. I don't know him. all about. My real father died when I was a baby. As far as I'm concerned, my stepdad is my real father. Okay, I kind of forgot. I left Nick and his girlfriend at about 10 o'clock. After that, I, I just took a walk and then headed back home.
Oh, it's you, Inspector. Anything I can do for you? Yes, what is it? Paul Davis. I'm 38. I've had this place for 10 years now. My blood type is... Uh, oh. My wife and my daughter. I like to fish. That's why I named this place the Hungry Fisherman. I have a degree from the Roberts School of Cuisine. I'm from New Orleans. I'm a member of the Association of Restaurant Owners. I was in the restaurant the whole evening. No, I didn't go out at all until I closed the place at 2 in the morning. I went straight home after work. Now that you mention it, that night when I was closing up, I saw Stanley in front of the restaurant. I was kind of surprised. I wondered what he was doing there so late. It happened. Sarah doesn't like to talk about it. So please don't bring it up unless you absolutely have to. We're just a regular married couple. My car, you say? Well, I don't have one. My wife always picks me up after the restaurant closes. Her car is yellow. Bill was in a very good mood that night. What? Oh, he was all alone. I still can't believe he was killed. I don't know her. Bill's relationship with Edward was pretty bad. Once when he was drunk, I heard Bill muttering about how much he hated his father. He was here at least twice. No, not with his brother. By himself. I've never met him. I don't know him. Who? I don't know him. I don't know him. Before Janet and Bill got married, they used to come here together quite often. They were a nice looking couple. Sure, I know him. Before his sister's wedding, he had a quarrel with Bill right here in the restaurant. He seemed convinced that Bill would hurt Janet somehow. I don't know him. I don't recognize that name. I don't know her. Nah, I don't know her. She's a good girl. I'm not big on compliments, but she works real hard for me. He's a big man in town. He only owns a crummy theater, but apparently he's quite well. Stanley is not a bad guy. But he has a tendency to get on people's nerves. He and Mr. Robbins were always fighting about something. What? Stanley left here around midnight when my bill was killed. I don't know. What do you want to talk about? Sarah Shea. How old do I look? Wrong. I'm 24 years old. I play the piano for all the drunks who come to this place. Today it's side P, but who knows what it'll be tomorrow. There's no one. I'm all alone. I like to be by myself. I don't like to talk with cops. Apart from playing the piano, I don't have any. I was born in California. None. I was in the restaurant all evening. I left at about two in the morning. That night I heard Bill mumble Liberty something or other. Maybe he was referring to the bank. I try not to think about it. It happened a long time ago. And I would rather not discuss it, thank you. No, I'm not planning to get married right now. What business is it of yours? I drive a white Mustang. His murder goes to show that you can't predict anyone's fate. 
The night he was killed, he came here alone. But he often came with a woman with long blonde hair. Don't know her. I don't know him. He's been here a couple of times. I don't know her. I don't know him. I don't know her. Who? I don't know him. Enough already. I'm getting bored. He's been here before. He looks like a gentle person. The kind of person who wouldn't hurt a fly. <laughs> but trust me. Beneath the surface is a woman capable of anything. Don't know him. There's no point in asking me. I know nothing. Well, I don't really care about other people's lives. So it's not surprising that I don't know these people. Who? Doesn't ring a bell. My boss is a good guy. He owns the Gaslight Theater. He's easy to recognize because he always has a big cigar sticking out of his mouth. Hey, wait a minute. I saw Mr. McBain near the college when I was going home from work the night of the murder. He might have been coming from the church. He's always putting on an act. That's probably why he gets upset whenever somebody up the stage is in. I hate him. The night the murder took place, he was here trying to pick a fight with Bill Robbins. I think he mentioned that he lives uptown. You don't really think I can remember every single customer who comes into this place. How do I know if anyone is telling me his real name anyway? I need to see your ticket, sir. What is it? Gay Lyman. I'm 38 years old. I'm a parking lot attendant for the Robbins Trading Company. It's type B. I have a wife and a son. I jog every morning, rain or shine. I never miss a day. You satisfied? None in particular. I was born in Philadelphia. None. I finished my shift at 8 o'clock, changed clothes, and went home. What can I tell you? I lead a dull life. Don't go saying I told you this, but Bill Robbins was a cutthroat businessman. Made a lot of enemies. Matter of fact, he and the real estate agent had a nasty argument a couple of days before Mr. Robbins was killed. I don't know anything about it. It's still missing. I've never met Bill Robbins, but I hear he was a pirate. You quote me on that and I'll deny it. I don't know her. He's the president. Hey, we don't hang out. That's all I can tell you. I don't know him. I don't know her. I don't know him. I don't know any of these people. This is a waste of time. I don't know her. I don't know him. He's a real estate agent who sold the Robin Trading Company this parking lot. I don't know her. I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know her. I don't know her. Can we stop this already? Who? I don't know him. I don't know her. Come on, I told you, I don't know these people. I don't know him. Sorry, I don't know him. I understand, Mr. Harrow. The President's office is right this way. Arb. 
bank's business does not concern the police. Gregory Raymond. I'm 50 years old. I'm the president of Liberty Bank. My blood type is O. I have a wife and three children. I like to play golf. I'm a certified accountant. I come from Nevada. I belong to a banker's association. I wasn't here the day it happened. I was in New York on business. At the risk of being indiscreet, the H.H. Company is in dire financial straits. I've heard that Mr. Holden has turned to some questionable sources for monetary support. I've had business dealings with him. He was young, but highly skilled. You know, only a few days ago, the construction of his company's new parking lot was completed. I've never met her. I've known Edward Robbins for a long time. He's a shrewd businessman. I doubt the Robbins Trading Company would be where it is today if it weren't for him. That's Bill Robbins' younger brother. I wonder whether he'll replace his brother as chief executive officer. No, I have never met her. Excuse my bluntness, but the director of the H.H. Company is a servile flatterer, and it appears to me that his company is financially unsound. I met her once. She's quite a long-winded woman. He's a serious young man, but I don't think he has what it takes to run a corporation. He's Bill Robbins' father-in-law. You know that the land the new parking lot was built on used to belong to him? Apparently, he sold it to Bill at a very reasonable price. I've never met Mrs. Robbins. I don't know him. Simon Randall is an excellent doctor. I've gone to him on a number of occasions. I don't know her. I've never had the pleasure. She used to be Bill Robbins' secretary. She seems like a very capable woman. Mr. Robbins must have liked and respected her because he took her everywhere with him. No, I don't know him. I don't know her. Mr. McBain has been doing business with our bank for a long time. The name's not familiar. But then, I don't know the name of all our customers. I don't know him. Welcome. Sorry, the boss isn't here, but maybe the general manager can help you. Please step this way. Well, detective, what is it? Michael Holding, 30 years old. I'm the general manager here. I have type A blood. My father, Tony, my mother, and my wife, Kate. I'm really into my stamp collection, and I read a lot. Leave the mowing of the lawn to me. 
I was born in Ohio. I'm a member of the White Hawk Club. I was at home. As soon as I finish work, I always go straight home. I can't think of anything else worth telling you. Just do your best. Tate has been really upset over this. It's a horse riding club. Bill used to be president. We were going to call it the Red Rum Club, but we didn't want people to confuse it with the old Red Tie Club. It was a terrible case. Speaking of which, Bill once told me he knew who did it. He was really strange about it. He wouldn't say anything else and sort of laughed it off. I didn't take him seriously. Everything is going just fine with Kate, thank you. Marrying her was the smartest thing I ever did. My car? I drive a white Mercedes. Why? Business? I don't know exactly, but I guess it's going okay. He was a bit overbearing, but you could really count on him. I haven't talked to her much. My father-in-law is a difficult man to please. I have a hard time dealing with him. We went to college together. He's a nice guy, but he lacks confidence. What he needs is a good woman. I think he's got his eye on someone. We got married two years ago. Bill introduced us. She's the best wife a man could ask for. My father took over the company from his father-in-law. Lately, things have been real tough in the business world, and he's having a hard time of it. That's my mother. I have no contact with Janet's father. It's sad to think that she's a widow, just six months after her wedding. That's Janet's twin brother. He didn't seem to like Bill. He has a clinic near my house. She's the nurse over at Dr. Randall's clinic. She's nice. Real nice. She's the Robbins family's housekeeper. She's been sort of a substitute mother for Fred. Now there's a woman who's really got it together. She knew everything related to Bill's business. I don't know him. I don't know her. I've had almost no contact with him. I don't know him. Who? Can I help you? What do you want with me, Inspector? Joe Carrington. I'm 52 years old. I work in real estate. My blood type is AB. There's my wife, Martha, my daughter, Janet, and my son, Ralph. I read mystery. I'm a certified real estate appraiser. I was born in Philadelphia and lived in Boston for a while. I moved here five years ago. I don't like groups. I don't belong to any club. That night I was supposed to meet a customer here, but the person didn't show up. I waited until 10 o'clock and then gave up and went home. Now that you mention it, yes. I did see Mr. Holding when I was leaving work that day. He was in a big hurry. What? I haven't the faintest idea. Martha is my second wife. My first wife died of heart disease. The children are Martha's by her first husband. But that's not a problem. I love them like my own. I don't drive. It's going fairly well. Thank you. He was a selfish man. I hate to say this about my daughter's husband, but he had it coming. She's a treasure. She takes very good care of me and the kids. I can't stand arrogant like him. I don't know him very well. I've never spoken to her. 
I hear that things have been hard for the HH company since larger competitors have moved to the area. I've never met her. Well, I don't know him. I was opposed to their marriage from the start. Janet was mesmerized by that sweet-talking SOP. He just wouldn't listen to reason. He's at a difficult age. Still, I think we have a good relationship. He tells me everything. Fortunately, I'm a very healthy man. I haven't been to a doctor in years. No, I don't know her. I've only met her a couple of times. I don't know anyone by that name. I don't know her. I don't know her. I've never had any contact with her. No, I don't know her. I don't know him. I've never met him. How can I help you? We're going through a difficult time, but the management is stable. I'm telling you, it's just a matter of time before we get out of this slump. You know, I almost forgot. I've seen her and Bill together downtown. What do you want? Go away. James McBain. I'm 56 years old. I own a movie theater. Type B. I have no family. The day I quit smoking cigars is the day I die. There's so many of them, they'd be tough to list. I was born in good old Liberty. I'm a member of the Chamber of Commerce. The night Bill was murdered, I met Edward and we had a few drinks. That's it. The whole story. Edward left here at about 10 o'clock and then I went to bed. It's none of my business, but I'll tell you what I know. You must have heard about Bill having affairs. Well, he was fooling around a lot. What's it got to do with me? Marriage? Never. Business at the movie theater is going great. Wonderful. Couldn't be better. He was a sharp young man. It's no surprise that he had a lot of enemies. Sorry, I've never met Joe's wife. Edward and I have known each other since we were in school together. He's next in line for Bill's job. I don't know. He seems nice enough. There's a rumor going around that the HH company is in big trouble. Don't know the lady. From what I've heard, he's a hopeless businessman. But he's got his good points. He sure loves that wife of his. Joe Carrington is one strange guy. I keep away from him. She's had a tough break, poor kid. But she's young. She'll get over it. No, I don't know him. He's a friend of mine. That's the young girl that Simon is taking care of. She's the Robin's family's maid or housekeeper or something. She used to be Bill's secretary. I don't know him. Sorry, I don't know her. Who the hell is that? I've never met him. Who are you? What do you want? What's this all about? Stanley Howard. I'm 34 years old. 
I'm a novelist. You must have heard of my books. Disco Inferno, Dancing with the Devil in the Pale Moonlight, caused quite a stir when it came out. B. I live by myself and I like it that way. I like to drive. It's how I relieve stress. The ability to meet my deadlines, no matter what I have to do to get the job done. I was born in New York, but I didn't like it. Too noisy, too crowded. It's easier for me to write here. I've been living in Liberty for three years now. I belong to the American Writers Guild. I went to the Hungry Fisherman for a few drinks, and then I went straight home to my apartment. I'm telling you the truth. I was a bit drunk, so I went to bed immediately. I don't know anything about Bill Robbins. Really. No? Nothing in particular. I don't remember hearing about it. Not really something I'm proud of, but my wife ran out on it. With my being an artist, you know, our lifestyles just didn't match. I... I didn't steal any car. Come on. A knife? I have nothing to say that would be worth your time or mine. Yeah, it's true that we've talked a couple of times over at the Hungry Fisherman, but that's about it. I don't know him. I've never even met him. I've met him a couple of times. I've run into her over at Bigger Store. She's really beautiful. Nah, I don't know him. She's a busybody, isn't she? And uncultured. I have no interest in loud-mouthed women with no understanding of literature. I don't know him. He's the real estate agent who helped me find this apartment. I don't know anything about him. I've never even talked to him. I don't know him. The nurse over at the Randall Clinic? She's a bit cool, but she's one good-looking woman. Nah, no, I don't know him. I don't know him. That's the owner of the Hungry Fisherman. I think that Bill Robbins had a thing for her. He always went out of his way to be nice to her. No, I don't know him. I don't know him. Welcome! How are you, sir? Danny Biggs. I'm 60 years old. I own this store here. My blood type is A. I have a wife, daughter, and a son. I like to go fishing down at Liberty River. When me and the boys get together, there's no one who can beat me at five-card stud. I was born in this town. Does a bowling league count? I closed the store at 8 o'clock, as always, and did some scrubbing up. I was home by 9 o'clock. No, nothing out of the ordinary. Mystery novel fanatics, wasn't it? They wore red ties to their meetings for no reason I could figure out. Yes, it must have been 20 years ago. I drive a brown station wagon. Yeah, yeah. It disappeared two or three days before the murder. And when I heard that Bill Robbins was stabbed, I got real worried. Edward Robbins, oldest boy. I hate to speak ill of the dead, but he was the kind of man who wouldn't think twice about hurting others if he could profit from it. I don't know her. He's a big man in this town. We went to high school together. He was top of his class, a real hard worker. Sorry, I don't know him. She's a regular, comes in all the time, and she always has a smile on her face. Yes, he's the president of the HH company. I don't know her very well. No, I don't know Kate's husband. I don't think I've ever met him. 
Janet shops here sometimes. I always thought she looked kind of sad for a newlywed. Sorry, I don't know him. I went to him once for a medical examination. He's a really good doctor. That's the nurse working in Dr. Randall's clinic. Recently, the poor thing looks terrible. You'd think someone broke her heart. That's the Robbins family housekeeper. No, I don't know her. The name doesn't ring a bell. Who? No, I don't know her. I just know that he owns the Gaslight Movie Theater. That's the struggling writer who lives in an apartment building down the street. He's always boasting about this and that, but never seems to be doing anything. I guess things are looking up for him, though. He's been buying like there's no tomorrow. I don't know him. Welcome to the Hotel Grand. What can we do for you? Well, hmm, the Red Tie Club. I've heard the name somewhere, but I can't quite remember. I don't know him. I remember her name. I think I've seen her with Bill Robbins a few times. She's got long blonde hair, doesn't she? Mr. McBain is one of our shareholders. About 20 years ago, his father died and left him the movie theater. I don't know him. I haven't done anything. Still more questions. If it's about the deceased CEO, you should ask the president. He's in the back room. Please step this way. Well, I forgot. It's hard to remember that sort of thing. You surprised me. Allowed to be of service. Wilbur Ford. I'm 48. I teach psychology at Hoolington. My blood type is A. I have a wife and three kids. I like taking long walks. I have a PhD in psychology. I was born in Washington, D.C. I'm a member of the American Association of Psychology. I was in the psych department study room preparing for a discussion group. There are a lot of people in the room with me who can back up my story. As they say, there's more to this case than meets the eye. That must have been about 20 years ago. I have a couple of questions I'd love to ask the members of that group. If only there was a membership list. You know, I talked to Sarah Shields about it. I got the strongest feeling that she knew the assailant and was, for some reason, keeping his identity to herself. He was just murdered, right? I read about it in the paper. That's Ralph's mother. He's the president of the Robbins Trading Company, isn't he? Sorry, I've never met him. I don't know her. I don't know him. 
I don't know her. I don't know him. Oh, that's Ralph's father. Ralph is one of my students. Yeah, she's one of my student's twin sister. He's in one of my classes. He's a top-notch student. He just completed an impressive research paper entitled To Commit the Perfect Crime. That's the medical examiner who performed the autopsy, right? I don't know her. I don't know her. Who? He's the owner of the Hungry Fisherman, I think. I know who she is. She works over at the Hungry Fisherman. I go there for drinks sometimes. I'm sorry, I've never met him. I think he's a writer. I've come across him a couple of times over at the Hungry Fisherman. I don't think he could commit such a big crime. Why? Because he's a wimp, that's why. I've never heard that name before. Janet's twin brother. I don't know him. Oh, you again. I'm not lying. No. I left at 10 o'clock. Or maybe it was 11. What? I haven't the faintest idea. I've already told you everything I know. I don't know. Nobody came here and I didn't go out. Other than what I've told you, there's nothing worth mentioning. about Bill Robbins' murder. No, nothing in particular. You look dead. <laughs> Excuse the expression. Are you close to putting a lid on this case? it's going nowhere. Try something new. You mean to tell me that you don't know who the murderer is yet? You know, if you keep working at this pace, people are going to lose confidence in it. Solve this case soon, or there are going to be angry folks knocking down our doors. What now, Harold? You know you have to go through proper police procedures. I understand. I'm going to give you a search warrant. You had better not make me sore. You hear me, Harold? I understand. I understand. I understand. 
I understand. I understand. I understand. I understand. I'm going to give you a search warrant. You had better not make me sorry. You hear me, Harold? I've already issued a search warrant. Don't you keep track of these things? Come on, Harold, you're jumping the gun. You don't have enough to justify a search. Hi, JD. How's the investigation going? You know, you're the one guy who can solve this case without all breaking loose. Please come in. Is there something else I can do for you, sir? There's someone I'm interested in, but... I don't know what you're talking about. must be Janet. I don't know what you're talking about. Ah, you again. Everybody has a brain book. Why shouldn't I have one too? Are you implying that there's something wrong with it? all about.
I don't know anything about an insurance policy. Lots of people have guns to protect themselves, so there's nothing worth talking about. My mother threw out every picture, every memento, when she married my stepfather. I met Bill at my father's office. He was so handsome and nice and mature. Before I knew it, I was in love with him. I was so sure we'd be together forever. Uh, a knife? I don't know anything about a knife. My first husband was a member of the Red Tie Club. I know nothing about it. There's no pistol in this house. My first husband lived in this town briefly, a long time ago. I've already told you everything I know. I have never used a pistol. That... that... I... I don't know. I... I don't know. Nobody came here and I didn't go out. silver and look expensive. The initials SM are written on them. There are no blood stains or fingerprints. It's a 22 caliber Derringer pistol, the type of gun generally used for personal protection. Shots had been fired from it. The fingerprints found on it belong to Shelley McDonald and Ralph Herring. It's a life insurance policy issued by the Heart Safe Insurance Company. The policyholder was Bill Robbins, and the beneficiary is his wife, Janet. It entitled her to $10 million. Wouldn't I love a part of that? It's a silk scarf. We found traces of type AB blood on it. It's a butcher knife with a narrow blade. It is about the same size as the murder weapon. We found traces of type AB blood. This is a Liberty Bank bank book in the name of a Mr. Stanley Howard. The account was practically empty until Mr. Howard deposited a huge chunk of money this month. How's the investigation coming along? Hey, JB, if they got to you once, Hat, don't give up. Make a fresh start. Take your time.
Hey, Harold. Do you intend to spend the rest of your life working on this case? Hurry up, will you? We're busy here. We got a lot of things to do in case you haven't noticed. What is this? What do you want? Harrison Turner. I'm 34 years old. I'm an insurance agent. My blood type is O. My wife and two daughters. I like to toss down a few cold ones and reminisce about my hippie days. I swim the same way I drink, like a fish. I was born in Santa Cruz. I belong to the Insurance Agents Association. The day of the murder, I went out of town on business and came back at about 11 o'clock. I was too tired to drive home, so I just slept here in the office. Hey, wait. I saw Mr. Robbins that night. No, no, not the victim. His father. It was kind of late, and he was walking with someone near the church. It's just an excuse for snooty rich kids to get together and get smashed. Never heard of it. What are you asking me for? Mrs. Robbins came in to sign the contract about a month ago. She said everything seemed to be in order. Business is slow, but I'm doing all right. I read about it in the papers, like everybody else. We live in a terrible world. What am I supposed to do about it? I've never met her. The jerk wouldn't buy insurance from me. He said he doesn't believe in insurance. I've never met him. I don't know her. He's the president of the HH company. He's trying to get insurance from us. I guess their fancy new Eau de Citrus perfume is a real bomb. I don't know her. He took out a policy for his family. He's a real family man. The guy at home estate? I know him. He took out a fire protection policy. Yeah, I know the lady. She's got a policy with it. Kind of fishy that the lady just signed the papers and boom, her old man drops dead. You bet we're looking into it. I don't know him. Dr. Randall bought insurance here. It was a life insurance policy and the beneficiary was Susie McNally. I've never met her. I don't know her. I don't know her the owner of the Hungry Fisherman, right? Sure, I know her. I really like her music. No, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. What is this all about? I'm tired now. Please come back some other time. All I wanted was for us to be together. I was so happy when we were together. Uh, a night? I don't know anything about a knife. I don't know. You again. Swell.
How can I help you? Account book? What about it? Are you implying that there's something funny with our company's account book? I'm telling you it's just a matter of time before we get out of this slump. What's that? I suppose someone's already told you that I married into money. The HH company was founded by my wife's father. I drive a black BMW. I told you I was here the whole time. I didn't go anywhere. I don't know anything. My wife died from a liver disease five years ago. No, nothing in particular. like a secret HH company account book. Look at how much money the company borrowed. Its financial situation must be grim. This is a membership roster for the Red Tie Club. There are only four names listed. James McBain, Edward Robbins, Simon Randall, and Henry Klein. about you burning out. What do you want now, Harold? You know you have to go through proper police procedures. I understand. I'm going to give you a search warrant. You had better not make me sore. You hear me, Harold? You again. Swell. It was just for fun, no big deal. Just a bunch of buddies who shared a common interest.
that doesn't demand it. Robbins and Freddy were out, but I was home all night. When did they get in? I don't know. I must have been asleep. Can you believe there was speculation that Bill had committed the crime? Just preposterous! Mr. Robbins went to the police and made sure they didn't spread that crazy story all over town. I had a husband and a child and a wonderful life. And I lost it all in one car wreck. But that was years ago. I worked for the Robbins family since Helen Robbins died. I remember hearing that years and years ago, Mr. Robbins was involved in some sort of club. I think that was the name. letter addressed to S.M., my love. It starts off, what do you see in a man like him? It goes on to say, I'm the only one who really loves you, and I would kill for you. The letter was written by Fred Robbins. You look dead. Please come in. I don't know, maybe it could be mine. Yes, I wrote the letter, but what does it have to do with the murder? about an IOU. What do you want? I didn't go anywhere that night. died of cardiac arrest when I was only four years old. It was just after he moved into town. I... I don't know. I'm not ready to get married yet. Besides, there's no one for me.
isn't it? That's the only time I remember Simon bringing a scalpel home from the hospital. How's the investigation coming along? Well, hang in there. Any new leads? Show me what you found. It's possible that this scalpel was used in the murder of Bill Robbins. We could detect no fingerprints or blood stains on the scalpel. This is an IOU acknowledging a debt of $300,000. The lender was Bill Robbins and the borrower, Tony Holding. The term of repayment has expired. Dead. How can I help you? I was at home the whole evening. Sorry. I don't know much about the company. I've never borrowed any money. I don't know. I didn't borrow money from anyone. Is that clear? I'm not free to talk about company finances. I leave such details to my husband. Yes, I think it was a club formed by mystery novel fanatics years ago, when I was young. An account book? I don't know anything about company finances. My father takes care of all that. An IOU? For what? I don't know what you're talking about. I don't know. I think my mother knows more about it. My father took over the company from his father-in-law. Lately, things have been real tough in the business world, and he's having a hard time of it. Still more questions. If it's about the deceased CEO, you should ask the president. He's in the back room. Please step this way. What happened? What is it? I already told you I was at McBain. Stop badgering me. I know my right. No, nothing. Please catch whoever did it. He's an odd fellow. I haven't talked to him much since Bill's wedding. Oh, that's the nurse over at Simon. She's taking the day off. Ever since my wife Helen died, she's been keeping house for me. Never met him. More 
questions, Inspector? I was in the restaurant all evening. I left at about two in the morning. Sorry, I don't usually drop earrings in married men's bedrooms. I have no idea who did it. What good would it do me to know anyway? Welcome to the Hotel Grand. What can we do for you? The night of the murder, I was here working. Yes, all night. I've got it. Now I remember. A long time ago, a group of mystery novel enthusiasts used to get together. Sometimes at this hotel. I think Mr. McBain and Dr. Randall were the organizers. The Red Tide Club. I'm pretty sure that was the name. the investigation coming along. Well, hang in there. JB, you are hot on the trail. Go for it. yet? You know, if you keep working at this pace, people are going to lose confidence in you. Solve this case soon, or there are going to be angry folks knocking down our doors. What do you want, Harold? Authorization for what? Listen, Harold, I don't think we have enough evidence to issue an arrest warrant yet. I'm sorry, can't give you permission. Okay, okay. You can go ahead and make an arrest. This is someone you should bring in for questioning. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. You can go ahead and make an arrest. This is someone you should bring in for questioning. How's the investigation coming along? Well, hang in there. Ah, oh, you again. I'm telling you the truth. I was a bit drunk, so I went to bed immediately. I don't know anything about Bill Robbins' murder. I... I didn't steal any car. Come on! Everybody has a fan hook. Why shouldn't I have one, too? Are you implying that there's something wrong with it? Still more questions. If it's about the deceased CEO, you should ask the president. He's in the back room. Please step this way. That guy has no managerial skills. He's an odd fellow. I haven't talked to him much since Bill's wedding. I already told you I was at McBain's. 
Stop badgering me. I know my right. No, nothing. Please catch whoever did it. What happened? My wife Helen died of cancer about 20 years ago. What is it? What is it? How's the investigation coming along? Well, hang in there. What do you want, Harold? Authorization for what? Okay, okay. You can go ahead and make an arrest. This is someone you should bring in for questions. Okay, okay. You can go ahead and make an arrest. This is someone you should bring in for questioning. Harold, I have already given you an arrest warrant for that person. You look dead. <laughs> Excuse the expression. Are you close to putting a lid on this case? Truth is difficult to determine. But I know you can. Know who the murderer is yet? I'm the victim's younger brother. The night Bill was killed, I went to the movies and then back home. I had no reason to want my brother dead. Come on. Please release me. I didn't. Please believe me. I couldn't have killed my brother. Get off my back. I'm innocent. They're a present I gave someone. Okay, it was Susie McNally. He didn't trust insurance agents. Said they were the scum of the earth. No matter how many people encouraged him to get insurance, he never bought any. Yes. Initials SM stand for Susie McNally. Okay, so I didn't go right home. After the movie, I waited for Bill in front of the hungry fisherman. I threatened to tell Janet about his affair with Susie, but he just shrugged and said to go ahead and tell Janet. He said he couldn't care less. Made me really angry, so I grabbed him and we fought. And then, what could I do? I just went home. It's true. I'm not lying. Please believe me. I'm the president of the H.H. H. Company. I don't know anything about the murder. I'm of no use to you. didn't, I swear. That night I saw Carrington at the graveyard. It wasn't me. I didn't do anything. I swear I didn't do anything. Please believe me. I'm sure he was killed for the insurance money. I have no idea what this is about. Yes, this is the H.H. H. Company account book. I tried to reimburse the money, but... I borrowed money from Bill. I had no choice. The company was falling apart. We had lots of debts. I worked my butt off, but things just kept getting worse. The day Bill was killed, I called him to ask for an extension on the payment. He said no. I asked him if he could discuss it in person. He made me beg. He finally agreed. I waited at our designated meeting place for over an hour. He never showed.
My name is Manuel Barco, and I'm visiting from Brazil. I don't understand what I'm supposed to have done. The cops are really something, treating me like this. I'm not the murderer. I didn't do anything. I don't know anything. I can't answer you. I don't know anything. You should take a break. I'm worried about you burning out. What do you want now, Harold? You know you have to go through proper police procedures. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. You can go ahead and make an arrest. This is someone you should bring in for questioning. How's the investigation coming along? Well, hang in there. I'm the owner of the Gaslight Theater. I don't have anything to do with Bill's murder. Come on, leave me alone. Let me go. I got work I gotta do. I don't know anything. I told you, I didn't do it. There's nothing to talk about. What do you mean? Henry Klein is already dead. You should take a break. Truth is difficult to determine. But I know you can do it. Hey, Harold, do you intend to spend the rest of your life working on this case? Hurry up, will you? We're busy here. We got a lot of things to do in case you haven't noticed. Who is it? What do you want? Probably Freddy. Look dead. <laughs> Excuse the expression. Are you close to putting a lid on this case? Hey, JB. If you need any help from the lab, just give me a call and I'll take care of it. This is the 20-year-old newspaper clipping. The headline reads, Will the case of Liberty Bank's embezzled funds ever be solved? Could there be a connection between that case and Robin's case? You look dead. The case of embezzled funds at the Liberty Bank. In August 1966, a large amount of money was found missing from Liberty Bank. Henry Klein, a 32-year-old bank teller, was brought in for questioning, but released due to a lack of evidence. The investigation was cut short when, immediately after his release, Henry Klein died in a brief accident. The deceased didn't leave behind any further clues, and the case remained unsolved.
burning of the Klein Residence. At 5 in the morning on September 30th, 1966, a fire broke out at the Klein Residence in the St. Louis Church. The house was burned to the ground and Henry Klein killed. His body charred beyond recognition. Police suspected arson, but could find no proof. The origin of the fire was listed as unknown in the investigation. remain unsolved. How's the investigation coming along? Red Tie Club didn't have anything to do with that. Are you saying the Red Tie Club had something to do with some kind of crime? That's a crock. The night Bill was killed, I took a walk near the graveyard. That's all I did. You're not saying that I killed Bill. Don't make me laugh. Did what? I don't appreciate being accused of murder. I didn't do it with anything because I didn't kill him. What more can I say? I didn't do it. How's the investigation coming along? I understand, Mr. Harold. The president's office is right this way. No, I don't know, but it was the darkest moment in this bank's history. Although it has never been proven, I'm convinced that Henry Klein was responsible. To this day, the embezzled money remains missing, and the incident taints the bank's record. Unfortunately, all the evidence was lost in the fire. Somehow, the bank's personnel file on Henry Klein was lost as well. this all about? I don't know. I didn't live here 20 years ago. That incident has nothing to do with me or my family. I know nothing about it. There's no pistol in this house. My first husband lived in this town briefly a long time ago. You surprised me. Now that's an interesting case. It had to have been extremely well planned, and I'd bet money that there was more than one person involved. As a matter of fact, the man who was under suspicion for the crime is buried here. When Henry Klein's house burned down, all the evidence was destroyed. The timing was just too perfect. I'm sure something fishy was going on. I went to the graveyard and examined every single grave. Sure enough, I found the grave of a man who died just before the incident. The name on the grave was Robert McNally. Interestingly, he was buried right next to Klein. This is pure speculation. But what if Henry Klein didn't really die? 
What if the corpse that was buried in his grave belongs to someone else? There are no pictures of Henry Klein left. Nothing. And everybody around here seems to have forgotten about him. In my opinion, someone should have kept digging. He's the key to that cave. A grave with nothing in it. No skeleton, no tattered remains of clothing, nothing. Somehow I have a hunch that Henry Klein is alive somewhere. Probably in this town. all about. Actually, my first husband worked for Liberty Bank. The name of my first husband was Henry Klein. bones belong to was shot through the right leg. You should take a break. Still more questions. If it's about the deceased CEO, you should ask the president. He's in the back room. Please step this way. What happened? I have nothing else to say. Please leave now. I've got work to do. You're beginning to bother me. Get out of here. I don't know anything about that. going. You know, you're the one guy who can solve this case without all breaking loose. What do you want now, Harold? You know you have to go through proper police procedures. Okay, okay. You can go ahead and make an arrest. This is someone you should bring in for questions. I can't believe your nerve. I want to call my lawyer immediately. I'm getting out of here. I was at McBain's house that night. I didn't go anywhere else. Don't be ridiculous. How dare you accuse me of my own son's murder? I didn't have anything to do with the murder. Do what? I told you I had nothing to do with it. I... I don't know anything about this. I... I don't know. I don't know anything about this. 
The HH Company is in a terrible financial position, isn't it? They must be on the brink of bankruptcy. Did Holding borrow money from Bill? Yes, it's true. I was a member of the Red Tie Club. Hey, leave me alone. I didn't kill my own brother. I've always had an inferiority complex towards Bill, and yes, I hated him because of what he had going with Susie, but I sure as didn't kill him. There's no point in yelling. I've told you a million times, I could never have hurt Bill. Can't answer. I'm sure he was killed for the insurance money. Yes, this is the HH Company account book. I tried to reimburse the money, but... I didn't! I'm innocent! Bill lent me money because he knew I'd have trouble repaying. He wanted an excuse to take over the company. He was cruel and underhanded, and I can't say that I never thought of killing him. Still, I couldn't have done it. I didn't even see him that night. I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. I don't know anything about the murder. I don't know why you brought me here in the first place. I didn't kill him, and that's the truth. I didn't have any motive. I don't know what you are talking about. I didn't do it, so I don't know. I don't know anything. How can I talk about something I don't know anything about? It's quite normal for a wealthy man to have a large insurance policy benefiting his wife. What's wrong with that? You can't suspect Janet. That's going too far. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. How can I talk about something I don't know anything about? That's awful. The HH company is on the brink of bankruptcy. Really? Mr. Holding was borrowing money from Bill? What's that? I don't know. It doesn't have anything to do with me. I don't know anything about the murder. I don't know why you brought me here in the first place. I didn't kill him, and that's the truth. I didn't have any motive. I don't know what you are talking about. I didn't do it, so I don't know. I'm the wife of the victim. The night of the murder, I didn't leave the house. I love Bill. How could I have killed him? I didn't do it. I had no reason to want to kill Bill. I didn't do anything. I don't know what you mean. Yes, they were found on the floor of my bedroom, but they don't belong to me. That's Bill's life insurance policy. That, that... I signed a contract for a life insurance policy because Bill said we should get one. It wasn't my idea. I didn't say anything about it because I knew you'd jump to conclusions. It's true that we didn't have the easiest of marriages. It was rocky at times, but I loved Bill all the same. I certainly didn't kill him. There's no way I could have killed him. I'm sure it's that woman. It just has to be Susie. Yes, it's true that I felt bitter towards Bill, but I loved him. I couldn't have killed him. 
I'm sure she's the one who stabbed Bill. I didn't kill him! I... I wasn't thinking clearly. I could only picture Bill and that girl, and before I knew it, I was in front of the store. I'm Janet's twin brother. I hated that rotten husband of hers. Still, I didn't kill him. The night he was murdered, I was out driving with friends until late at night. I didn't even see him. You can't pin it on me. Didn't I tell you? I didn't do it. How many times do I have to tell you? I didn't do anything wrong. If I had done it, I would have killed him differently. I would have made him suffer more. He was going to try to kill Bill with this gun. That is my blood. That day I was cruising around town with my friend Nick and his girlfriend. They dropped me off early so I could stop by Shelley McDonald's apartment. I was worried about what she might do. She hated Bill for what he did to her sister. I didn't know what she was capable of doing. That's why I took the gun away from her. I really didn't kill him. Honest! The more I heard stuff about Bill from Shelly, the more I felt something had to be done about it. I even thought about killing him, but somebody beat me to it. I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. I'm the Robbins family physician. I'll admit that it was a mistake on my part not to mention that I had been at McLean's house the night Bill was killed. Still, the fact remains that I didn't have anything to do with Bill's murder. I swear I didn't do it. I didn't kill Bill Robin. What do you mean by that? I told you I didn't kill him. I... I don't know. I don't know anything about it. I don't know anything, but... I swear I didn't do it. I didn't kill Bill Robin. What do you mean by that? I told you I didn't kill him. I'm the nurse over at the Randall Clinic. I was in my room that night. I don't know anything about the murder. I didn't kill Bill. I didn't have any reason to kill Bill. I didn't do it, honest. I don't do it. I don't know anything. I just don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. That newspaper article was written the same year that my father died. I just don't know. Yes, it's true that I was having an affair with Bill. And yes, I did go to Bill's house when Janet was away. Bill promised he would divorce her and marry me, but I... No, I didn't kill Bill because he wouldn't marry me. You don't know me. I couldn't do that. I really don't know anything else. Bill... Bill was bad. I couldn't have killed him. I, I loved him. I never even thought about it. It's true. Please believe me. Oh, please. I'm innocent. Please believe me. Yes, I knew 
that Fred loved me, but I couldn't love him back. I loved Phil. I don't know. I just don't know. I used to be Bill Robbins' secretary. The day of the murder, I took off work. I didn't so much as see my boss all day. I am not the murderer. I'm not the murderer. I didn't do it. I didn't want to kill Bill. I didn't. I swear it. What do you mean? Leave me alone. They don't belong to me. Please believe me, I don't know. That's my gun. That... Bill Robbins met my sister in New York and married her for her money. He spent it all, every penny. And when my sister couldn't support him anymore, he walked out on her. As I said, when my sister's money ran out, Bill dumped her. Well, Bill was her whole life. When she realized he wasn't coming back, she shot herself in the head with that gun. I came to this town to avenge my sister's death, but I gave up that silly idea. I said I didn't do it. Bill practically killed my sister. I was just waiting for the right moment to pay him back. When it came down to it, though, I couldn't kill him. I just couldn't. I didn't kill him. It's not true. I didn't do it. Please believe me. I don't know. Please believe me. I don't know. My only sister, Dorothy, married Bill Robbins in New York. It was an unhappy marriage. Bill killed her as sure as if he'd pulled the trigger himself. That's why I wanted to kill Bill Robbins with that gun. I was going to kill Bill, but Ralph wrestled the gun away from me. As we were struggling, a shot went off and hit him. The blood stains on the scar for his. That's absolutely true. Ralph convinced me to stop thinking about killing Bill. I didn't kill Bill. Honest, I'm telling the truth. I did not kill Bill. Where did you get that? The Red Tie Club didn't have anything to do with that. Henry Klein is already dead. Are you saying the Red Tie Club had something to do with some kind of crime? That's a crock. The night Bill was killed, I took a walk near the graveyard. That's all I did. You're not saying that I killed Bill. Don't make me laugh. Did what? I don't appreciate being accused of murder. I didn't do it with anything because I didn't kill him. What more can I say? I didn't do it. I'm a writer. At the time of the murder, I was home writing. I can't believe that you think I killed Bill Robbins. It's absurd. I didn't kill him. I don't know anything about the murder. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't do it. Listen, Inspector. I don't know anything, so please let me go now. Listen, Inspector. I don't know anything, so please let me go now.
that? Bill Robbins made a fool out of me with that car thing, and I was really upset with him. But to say that I killed him for that, come on, guy! It's true, honest. Come on, Inspector. You gotta believe me. I didn't kill anybody. I only stole one lousy car. Back off. I couldn't kill anybody. I'm not that kind of man. That was the money I got from selling the car I stole. Yes, I stole the car from the Robbins Trading Company's parking lot. I couldn't sell my books and I was having a hard time. I'm truly sorry. It was a bad judgment call. I'll admit to stealing a car, but I sure as hell <laughs> killing one. It's true. You gotta believe me. My name is Manuel Barkley, and I'm visiting from Brazil. I don't understand what I'm supposed to have done. The cops are really something, treating me like this. I'm not the murderer. I didn't do anything. I don't know anything. I can't answer you. I don't know anything. At the time the incident occurred, I was working for the Robbins Trading Company. I went to see Edward Robbins. I wanted to ask him about Henry Klein. When I asked for Mr. Robbins though, the secretary sent me into Bill Robbins' office. That's how I met Bill. Bill was really surprised to hear about Klein. The day after I met Bill, he came to visit me in my hotel room and asked me for every detail I knew about Klein. That's all. Twenty years ago, I carried the body to Klein's house and then set fire to the house. I did it because Edward Robbins asked me to. I... I didn't do anything else. Please believe me, I didn't kill anybody! I helped carry the body. What can I tell you? I don't know! I love Susie, but she had something going with Bill. I didn't do anything. I'm innocent. I'm in love with Susie, that's all. That's absolutely true. Ralph convinced me to stop thinking about killing Bill. I didn't kill Bill. Honest, I'm telling the truth. I did not kill Bill! Shelly didn't do anything. She used her scarf as a bandage when I accidentally got shot. We didn't do anything. I didn't do it. Honest. Bill was a terrible man. My sister Janet was just one of his victims. investigation going? You know, you're the one guy who can solve this case without all f breaking me.
look dead. Any new leaves? Show me what you found. It's an old photograph of a small girl standing between two men. The man on the left is using crutches. How's the investigation coming along? I don't know. I don't know. Are you saying that there's something wrong here? It's true that Bill and I argued about selling the land for the parking lot. Bill used Janet to get his slimy hands on that piece of land. He stole it from me. Oh yes, I fought with Bill over that. Do you blame me? But neither I nor anyone in my family had anything to do with Bill's murder. I swear I didn't do anything. Do what? For the last time, I don't know what you're talking about. Back off, detective. reminds me of my dead father. My mother showed me a picture of him a long time ago. Bill and I were having problems, so I spent a few nights at my parents' house. I'm sure that Bill had that woman over when I was away. The bimbo probably dropped them. That's Bill's life insurance policy. I wasn't thinking clearly. I could only picture Bill and that girl, and before I knew it, I was in front of the store. That's one of the few pictures we have of Susie's father. The man next to him is... I... I don't know. I don't know anything. I don't know anything, but... The man on the left, with the crutches, is my father. He hurt his leg during the war. I'm the one in the middle. My mother said that the man on the right was a friend of my father. That newspaper article was written the same year that my father died. Yes, those are mine. Yes, it's a disguise I used when I went to meet Phil. When I wear it, I look a lot like Shelley McDonald, Bill. That man... I helped carry the body. I... I took the body of the man on the left to Henry Klein's house. I came here because my business in Brazil failed, and I thought Edward Robbins would help me. I was hoping he'd lend me some money. Bill promised he'd give me money when I told him everything I knew. But he lied. He left me in a jam. I couldn't even pay for my hotel room. I was mad, sure. But if I'd have murdered him, I'd have had no chance of getting my money. You should take a break. I'm worried about you burning out. Now, 
how do you know who did it? Put the pieces together and get your man. don't know who the murderer is yet? You know, if you keep working at this pace, people are going to lose confidence in you. Solve this case soon, or there are going to be angry folks knocking down our doors. More questions, Inspector? Bill weren't real brothers, you know. That's what Fred said one night when he was smashed. Who is it? What do you want? What? It's probably Freddy. What do you want to know? I never touch anything in this garage. How can I help you? I don't know anything about it. I suppose nobody told you that Bill was adopted. My father knew Bill's real parents through business. When they died, he took Bill in. No, I don't know, but... In fact, Henry Klein and I worked together at the time. He was a skinny, nondescript fellow with brown eyes. He had just transferred from Boston, and, if I remember correctly, his family still lived there. Yes, his grave is probably in the Downhill Cemetery. all about. the investigation coming along. Any new lead? Show me what you found. Cosmetic blue contact lenses. They aren't prescription lenses. The user apparently has perfect vision.
I don't know anything. I... I don't know. I don't know anything, but... I don't know anything, but... Somehow, I had a feeling that there was something going on between Bill and Susie. I wanted nothing but happiness for Susie, so I wanted her to stop seeing Bill. I knew he was no good for her. Still, I didn't have any reason to kill Bill. I save lives, I don't take them. What kind of man would I be if I killed Bill? That... That... It wasn't me. It... It was... He was killed with a scalpel, but I didn't do it. Hen... Henry. Janet didn't do anything. I don't know. I don't know him. That... That I... Uh, I don't know. What about the color of my eyes? I don't know anything. How can I talk about something I don't know anything about? The man called Henry Klein is already dead. Yes, Bill wasn't my real son. Bill's parents' company went bankrupt because of my actions. They both committed suicide. I hadn't meant to hurt them. I did it for the company. I felt terrible, so I took Bill and raised him as my son. Bill was always challenging me, fighting me over everything. He seemed to want to make my life miserable. But even so, I would never kill the boy. Stop this useless interrogation. I don't know. I don't know anything. Hmm. That... that I... I don't know what else to say. Those... those are not Henry Klein's bones. Liberty Bank incident, with the Red Tie Club, no, that, I don't know anything about it. Hmm. The HH Company is in a terrible financial position, isn't it? They must be on the brink of bankruptcy. Did Holding borrow money from Bill? The plan to embezzle money from the Liberty Bank was thought up and executed by the members of the Red Tie Club. Bill found out about our secret when he talked with Barkley. He thought that we were hiding the embezzled money and he threatened to reveal everything unless... He was standing in front of Klein's grave, staring at us with contempt. I hated him at that moment, but I never thought of killing him. It was that creep, Henry Klein, who killed Bill. was sure that we killed McNally. He said that the Red Tie Club should have been called the Murder Club. I tried to reimburse the money, but... Yes, this is the HH Company account book. I'm sure he was killed for the insurance money. I showed that picture to Bill once. He told me my father was used as a replacement. I never could figure out what he meant. about 
about the Liberty Bank incident. He thought that maybe my father had been the victim of some diabolical plot. He vowed to uncover it. When I asked Simon about it, he got angry and nervous and said that was ridiculous. I tried to stop Bill. I figured what's done is done. Why dig up the past? If, if I'd been able to convince him not to pursue it, this awful thing would never have happened. Janet didn't do anything. I don't know. I don't know him. The man called Henry Klein is already dead. Really? Mr. Holding was borrowing money from Bill? Robert McNally was a friend of Henry Klein's. He came to this town 20 years ago because Klein was here. Those... Those are Robert McNally's clothes. Bill was sure that we killed McNally. He said that the Red Tie Club should have been called the Murder Club. Hmm. I don't know anything. Joe, it's a photo. I don't know any of those people. I'll admit that Bill called us and asked us to meet him at Downs Hill Cemetery. Bill was going to turn us in expose our 20-year-old crime unless we gave him the money we'd stashed away. It was Henry Klein who stabbed Bill in the back. I'm sure he was killed for the insurance money. Trust insurance agents said they were the scum of the earth. No matter how many people encouraged him to get insurance, he never bought any. This doesn't mean anything to me. to collect the insurance money. Bill was still seeing that woman, even after we got married. I begged and begged him to stop, but it was no use. We fought over it the day he was killed. It got so bad that I lost my head and went after him with a knife. But Bill just grabbed me, threw me on the floor and left. I was sure he'd gone to Susie's place. You've got to believe me. I didn't kill him. Really, I didn't. I don't know anything. I don't know anything. Those... Those are Robert McNally's phones. I don't know anything, but... I don't know anything, but... Robert McNally died 20 years ago when I was working at the college of medical center. We needed a body to pass for Henry Klein's, and we used it. I still feel terrible about it. To 
to make up for what we did to Mr. McNally, I promised myself I'd take care of Susan. I knew Bill would humiliate and destroy her. I couldn't allow that. So I took my scalpel and went to the graveyard to kill that <laughs> But I wasn't the one who used the scalpel. It's quite normal for a wealthy man to have a large insurance policy benefiting his wife. What's wrong with that? You can't suspect Janet. That's going too far. Janet didn't do anything. I don't know. I don't know him. I don't know. What about the color of my eyes? I don't know anything. Awful. The HH company is on the brink of bankruptcy. Really? Mr. Holding was borrowing money from Bill? The man called Henry Klein is already dead. I swear I didn't do anything. Do what? For the last time, I don't know what you're talking about. Back off, detective. It's true that Bill and I argued about selling the land for the parking lot. Bill used Janet to get his slimy hands on that piece of land. He stole it from me. Oh yes, I fought with Bill over that. You blame me? But neither I nor anyone in my family had anything to do with Bill's murder. H Company is in a terrible financial position, isn't it? They must be on the brink of bankruptcy. Did Holding borrow money from Bill? This doesn't mean anything to me. It's quite normal for a wealthy man to have a large insurance policy benefiting his wife. What's wrong with that? You can't suspect Janet. That's going too far. I don't know anything. How can I talk about something I don't know anything about? I don't know. I don't know him. I don't know. What about the color of my eyes? I don't know anything. That's awful. The HH company is on the brink of bankruptcy. Really? Mr. Holding was borrowing money from Bill? The man called Henry Klein is already dead. sure that we killed McNally. He said that the Red Tie Club should have been called the Murder Club. Our company is in danger of bankruptcy.
How's the investigation going? You know, you're the one guy who can solve this case without all breaking loose. Now you know who did it. Put the pieces together and get your man. Hey, Harold. Robert McNally was a friend of Henry Klein's. He came to this town 20 years ago because Klein was here. Those... Those are Robert McNally's phones. I don't know anything. I don't know anything, but... I don't know anything, but... Mine. To tell the truth, my eyes are. Henry Klein had brown eyes. was sure that we killed McNally. He said that the Red Tie Club should have been called the Murder Club. What do you want from me? I don't know what to tell you. What do you want from me? I don't know what to tell you. What do you want from me? I don't know what to tell you. Our company is in danger of bankruptcy. Bill was ruthless. I tried to pay him back, but he laughed in my face. He said he was going to take over my company. Please believe me, I'm telling the truth. I didn't kill Bill. All right, all right. Henry Klein and I are one and the same person. Everything was planned by the Red Tie Club. It was going to be the perfect crime. And sure enough, the plan was carried out perfectly. But now, 20 years later, Bill Robbins stumbles on our secret and threatens to reveal everything. Bill was killed in the cemetery and was carried to Simon's car to a spot near the entrance of the college. Ed Robbins, Simon Randall, James McBain, and I started a club for mystery novel fanatics called the Red Tie Club. We'd present and critique mystery stories we'd written. We soon got bored. We wanted to do something more challenging. That's when we started to think about committing the perfect crime. Our plan called for faking a death. We figured that if a dead person was blamed for a crime, the crime would go unsolved. I met all the criteria required to play the leading role. I was in town on temporary assignment. My family wasn't here. Few people knew me. I was just another teller at the bank. I was practically anonymous. When Henry Klein died, I left town quietly. Nobody questioned me. All the traces I left behind were destroyed in the fire. I had plastic surgery. 
got blue contact lenses and became a different person altogether. I became Joe Carrington. I married my first wife a second time. My kids were too young to remember their real dad. Only Martha knew the truth. McBain took care of the money. I bought the land that was used to build the Robbins Trading Company's parking lot. The land my old house had been on and also started a real estate business. Fifteen years later, I came to this town again. When Janet decided to marry Bill, I was really shaken. He was pretty smart. I worried that he'd find out my secret and use it against me. I asked Ed Robbins to be careful. I told myself that as long as my daughter was happy, but Bill milked Manuel Barclay for information and then figured out the rest for himself. He began threatening us. We just wanted to protect ourselves and the comfortable lives we had made. Bill was threatening to blow it all away. I lost my head. Before I knew it, I had taken the scalpel away from Simon and stabbed Bill in the back. I don't know how many times I stuck the knife in. It was the imperfect end to our perfect crime. Our club's last plan was to put the blame on someone else. Man had so many enemies. When I realized that my own daughter might be charged with murder, more than I could take. That's when I decided to confess. Mr. Harold, I'm the man you're looking for. I am the murderer. <laughs>